Hey guys, my name is Sarah and welcome back to my channel. I am a fourth year dentist student in the States and today I'm going to talk about the general process of becoming a dentist in the States. The information that I'm going to talk about today is fairly easy to find on the internet but I thought I'll make a summary video for you guys so that you can save some time researching. And also I'll show you how I found this information and one more thing, these dental school related videos will be made into a series. So I'll be talking in detail about how to prepare for the DAT, what extracurricular activities you can do, and how to do well on your dental school interviews and so on. Plus, I'll be sharing my experiences and thoughts about being a dental student along the way. So stay tuned for the future uploads. And feel free to let me know if you have any video requests in the comments. Alright, let's get started. So what I did was I googled the top occupation in the states and not surprisingly the dentist is number four on the list. And dentist was ranked second in best healthcare professions and 10th in best paying jobs. Um, I'm not sure how accurate this information is but it says the median salary is 150k and less than 1% is unemployed. So it sounds like dentist is a pursuable job by numbers. So let's look at what dentists actually do. As you guys already know, dentists are doctors who specialize in oral health. According to ADA website, the main responsibilities of dentists are diagnosing oral diseases, promoting oral health and disease prevention, creating treatment plans, and performing surgical and non-surgical procedures on the teeth, bone, and soft tissue of the oral cavity. Does it sound like something you'll be interested in? If so, let's move on to how to get into dental school. All right, if you are a pre-dental student and you're serious about getting into dental school, then I highly recommend you to go over the statistics of dental school admissions. Uh, this will give you a general idea of what you're gonna be dealing with for next year or two. It could be more than that. And that's what happened in my case. When I first prepared for the dental school, I didn't even look at the statistics. I just gather information from acquaintance. I didn't really research deep enough and I think that was my mistake. So I hope you don't make the same mistake. So what you can do, you can just Google dental school statistics. I basically did that and you will see a lot of useful information. Also, ADA provides a dental school guide every year. It's not free, but I recommend to buy this book because it gave me an idea what school to choose because I was an international student and statistics of admissions of each school and how to plan for my application process. If you have pre-dental friends around, you can buy one book and then share it together. That's the small tip that I can give you. And the more information you know about the application process in each dental school, the more you'll be prepared for this long journey ahead. So for the 2016 to 17 application cycle, there were 12,000 applicants nationally and 6,000 applicants got into dental school. That's roughly 50%, which sounds not that bad. But what you should think about is those people are top 10% of each college. So you're competing with those smart kids and you're the smart kid. I wouldn't say it's easy or hard to get into dental school because the dental school admission process is very complex. At least for me, it felt very difficult and I think most of the applicants feel the same way. But what I can say, it's really doable. So let's move on to specific requirements to apply within the school. So first, what you need to do is you need to take all the prereqs. Bring me flowers, but don't wake me These prereqs are different from school to school, but generally you need to take one year of biology, one year of general chemistry, one year of organic chemistry, one year of physics. They recommend you to take genetics, microbiology, anatomy, physiology, molecular biology, cell biology, biochemistry, immunology, histology, all the high level biology classes. If you take those recommended courses, it's gonna be much easier for you to study in dental school because you're just reviewing the subjects, focusing on dental aspects. And also it's getting more competitive to get into dental school each year. So it's better to take all those recommended courses to boost up your chance to get it. Those are your dogs, I admit you don't have to be a science major as long as you take all the prereqs. I was a bio major because there was a lot of courses overlapped for graduation and dental school prereqs. So I just wanted to save time and money because I was an international student. But you can be an art major or history major as long as you take all the science courses. 
most dental schools require bachelor's degree. So consider dental schools or graduate programs. But there are some six to eight year programs that you can apply without degree. So you can apply to those programs right out of high school. If you're following the traditional way to apply to dental school after college, then you must have bachelor's degree and you must take those prereqs in college. So one of the frequently asked questions from you guys was about taking prereqs in community college. This totally depends on what dental school you apply to. I personally haven't heard of it yet, but some schools may allow applicants to take prereqs and CC. To figure this out, you need to check the school website or you may have to send them an email. Here I'm talking about the general rules, but generally dental schools say all the science prereqs must be completed at four-year college or university in the States or Canada. If you're ready to send prereqs and CC, you may have to take upper level courses in four-year university or college. Unfortunately for international students, you have to retake all the prereqs in the States or Canada. That's what I did. But there is a way which if you are already a dentist in foreign country, then you don't have to retake all the prereqs. I'll talk more about this next time. And you need to take the DAT. DAT. It stands for dental admission test. It's a 4 hours and 15 minutes long test and it includes 6 areas biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, reading comprehension, quantitative reasoning which is math and perceptual ability. At the time when I was applying to dental school, I thought that this is the hardest exam ever but now looking back it wasn't that bad at all compared to the test that I have now. So you will grow with it and it will make you evolve. I'll talk about how I study for DAT next time. I took it twice and I ended up getting pretty good score which is 23. So I will tell you tips for how I study for it. If you ask me would I be able to get into dental school with good GPA and DAT score, my answer is yes and no. Because dental school admissions is much more than just grades. It is much more complex and dental school look at a lot of different factors. So, extracurricular activities are important. Most of people, probably 99% of people will have good grades. So you will need to think that good GPA and good DAT is a baseline that you need to have. Just a qualification to apply to dental school. What makes you stand out of crowd is extracurricular activity. This includes community service, shadowing experience, research experience, and so on. I did have a lot of community service hours and extensive shadowing and working experience. And I was actively involved in research while I was getting my master's. Do whatever you think will make you stand out. Because you want to show admission committees that you are not just a book smart person. And beyond that, you have other obligations outside of academics. I really think that this is the key. Personal statement. Personal statement is very important as well because this will show the admission committee what kind of person you are. You're basically summarizing your life and connecting your past experience to dentistry. There is a guideline on AEDA website. Once you're done writing, make all of your friends, family, even professors read it so that you can get diverse feedback. I edited mine more than 10 times, so it's quite a process. I'll take a one for the love and a two for our Letters of recommendation. This is another very important portion of your application. I feel like I said everything is important, but it is. You'll be able to upload up to four recommendation letters on your application. But you can always send out extra letters to the school directly. I think what's important is the content of your recommendation letter, not the quantity. So who wrote it for you and what did they say about you? This is more important than the number of recommendation letters. For dental school in the States, you apply once a year. Application cycle opens up in early June. So you want to be prepared for the application before it opens. And each school has different deadlines, but I highly recommend you to just submit everything in early June and try to complete your application by maybe July. I didn't know this when I first applied to dental schools. I applied like in September and finished my application right before the deadline which is December. 
which is stupid. Don't do that. You're wasting your time and money. I try to complete your application as soon as possible. That will increase your chance to get interview invitation. Dental school admission is rolling based, so early birds get the worm. Now we assume that you completed your applications and just wait for the interview. So dental schools will contact you for the interview invitations by email. I got my first invitation in July and I was the very first group who were interviewed that cycle. And I got interviews until January. So don't be so discouraged if you don't hear from them right away. Sometimes it just takes time. And the interview is usually one-on-one, -on -one, but depending on which school you go to, some school does like two-on-one, -on three-on-one. They have different systems. My interviews were about 20 to 30 minutes. After the interview, school usually provide the school tour which is amazing. You just walk around the school and see how you like it. You should ask a lot of questions during the tour because that's how you know the vibe and how you know about the school before you commit. I will talk about my interview experiences and do's and don'ts next time, so stay tuned for that. After a long, long waiting game, you will get a acceptance letter. Usually they send out the first round of acceptance letters on December 1st. Waiting period is the worst thing that you can go through in your life, but it's worth it. Once you get into dental school, Welcome to hell, children. You will have many, many delightful exams upon arrival and it won't stop. But somehow you will find a way to enjoy it. So don't worry too much, you will be just fine. After four years of crying, no, I mean dental school, uh, <laughs> you will become a dentist. Of course, you will have to take national board exams and other required exams depending on where you wanna work. It's all good. You're gonna be called doctor. So this is the general process of becoming a dentist in the States. As I mentioned before, this will be a series, so if you have any requests, feel free to leave me a comment down below. I hope this video was somewhat informative and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Bring me flowers but don't wake me up And Jane and pain by taking shots out of my sippy cup I guess cough syrup was not enough Cause I keep coughing up what it was to be us when I cry, I use them to keep your flowers alive.